I think what I want to say is that in the case of Afia, this is not the right address. Britain is not the address. The address is behind us, the United States, and in Pakistan. And I know many of you have come from the Pakistan embassy. But I think it's very important that we make a decision here today that Afia's case is not just a women's issue. It's not just a Muslim issue. It's not just a Pakistani issue, although I know how enormous this issue is in Pakistan. But Afia and her tragic children is a case that moves everybody. It should be a universal case of horror. And I think we're taking the first steps today to publicize this and to make more and more people aware of it. And I also just want to say that what are we going to do about it here? Because at these kind of rallies, people always want to know, what can I do? And I just want to say a couple of things. One is about the universalizing of the people who should be involved in this. And the second thing is that it's up to all of us who are involved in these kind of campaigns and who try to support people like Afia and her family to be better informed. None of us is well enough informed. And I urge you all to constantly read the Cage Prisoners website. And I'm going to make a little plug here for an absolutely essential and brilliant book. I'm going to hold it up. It's Asim Qureshi's book. And I'm sure there's a way on the um, Cage Prisoners site which tells you how to get it. It's called Detention, Deportation, Disappearance the rules of the game. And he is, of course, referring to how the rules of the game changed after 9-11. So this is very essential reading so that we're better informed and our ability to influence other people is enormously enhanced by being better informed. But I also want to just say one other thing about the war on terror, that there is a lot that we can do in this address. And it's not only on the Afia case, and we have to at no time lose sight of all the other things. And I'm going to mention just two that are specific to Britain and specific to London at this moment. One, of course, is the case of Shaka Arma. You all know that Shaka Arma's family live in Battersea, and that Shaka's children and his wife have not seen him now for eight years and the youngest child has never met his dad. This is an appalling, appalling case, and the more pressure that we can put on it, the better. We have to do that. It's a real duty, the Shaka case, to get him repatriated back to Britain. And repatriation is, of course, the center of the case for Afia. She has to be released from an American prison and brought back to Pakistan. But there's one more case I'm going to mention, which many of you may be familiar about. At the moment, there is a succession of cases of young Muslims, Britons, Algerians, all kinds of different nationalities, young Muslim men who were on the demonstrations against the Israeli attack on Gaza with many of us. And in those cases, all the people who are being now, many of them have been judged and put away for two years, often for attacking, supposedly attacking police or for attacking Starbucks. Now, many, many middle class, middle aged or older people like me were on those demonstrations. None of us is in court. And I think that this is also something that all of you should inform yourselves more about. And I'm sure there are links to that from the um, cage prisoners. Or if you look on the Stop the War Coalition website, there's a link to the uh, campaigns being run for those people. So I urge you to take these cases, of which Afia is the symbol that above all we care about, particularly today, but see it as a whole unit of cases that we must all inform ourselves about and not be passive about. We have to change what's happening. Thank you very much for listening.